Okay, my Saturn Ion has 300,000 miles on it now. I'm going to give it a little present for its 300,000 mile birthday. It gets a junkyard engine with about 70,000 miles on it, I guess. So that should take me all the way to 500,000 on the car. I guess before I put it in, I'm going to change out the oxygen sensor. Probably pretty tough in the car. And I have to take this heat shield off to do that. <clears throat> it looks like there's just three fasteners to get off. This one's rusty. I took off the the old flange that had just been cut with a torch. And that came off not too bad. So I first pulled out this oxygen sensor. And it's not even close to the same length cable. And it's got the wrong sex connector on it. But fortunately, the other one I have, they come as a set is the correct one with the shorter cable and the right gender connector. This one is for the other side of the catalytic converter which I intend to replace as well. And so now it's getting this bolt out or nut off. That came out no problem. Okay, I'm going to chase the threads on, on these especially into the rusty <coughs> cast iron manifold. M8 by 1.25 if anybody cares. Same as the top two there. It's always nice when you chase the threads and then you take a bolt and you had to heat up super hot to get out and it just screws in with your fingers. I'm doing the same thing on the uh, manifold studs. This one's going to be a pain because this plate's in the way so I'll have to get it open in and turn that on. So this side might be okay. I should have worn gloves with that wire brush. It throws all the crap off right in your fingers. But it looks quite a bit better. I think I'm going to get the moto tool and do a little bit around those studs. I should should take them out, but I'm sure they wouldn't come out very easily. But that should be good enough, even if it left it just like it is now. Okay, I took out this heat shield with just one 15 millimeter bolt down there. And that allowed me to get the grinding wheel in there better, so I think that looks pretty good. It's all all cleaned up. It should seal nicely. Now I'll put the oxygen sensor in and top heat shield back on. And I think I'm going to leave this one off. It's going to get in the way of uh, putting the engine back in, I think, anyway. So Okay, heat shield's back on. I put liberal amounts of anti-seize compound on the uh, studs. I got these heater hose connections cleaned up with the wire brush. And also got the, uh, I think that's the top radiator hose goes to that guy. I got him cleaned up. And so now I think it's uh, ready to go in the car. Also cleaned up this uh, flange around here just so no grease gets in between the engine and the transmission. Okay, got the car up and draining the oil out of the engine in preparation for removal. Okay, draining the transmission fluid. This is a manual. Driver's side of the car. And this is the subframe. And here I have them on the drain bolt. So I have a 8 millimeter uh, hex key that I took out of a socket. You could cut off an Allen wrench. And it's up in here. It's hard to get at. But you can do it with this arrangement and an open end wrench on it. So I have that loose and we'll drain the fluid now. If you're wondering where to fill the manual transmission, I'm looking through the driver's side wheel well and you can see that that same 8mm type plug just next to the axle. It's a lot easier to fill it than it is to drain it. Okay, and now with the transmission drained, I'm going to take the uh, front driver's side hub and wheel off, disconnect the tie rod, caliper off, so I can pull the axle for the transmission, take the axle nut off. That has to be done so I can get the uh, transmission out. I'd like to take it out with the subframe, but I don't have a jack that I confident I can balance the whole thing on, so the plan is to take the transmission out first, and then take the end through the bottom, and then take the engine out through the top. First thing will be to disconnect the tie rod end so that I can pivot this to get better access without having to 
turn the steering wheel or worry about the steering wheel locking. So I'll take this guy out here. Okay, so the 18 millimeter nuts off. And now I'm going to use the hit it with the hammer technique to uh, let, have that tie rod end pop off. Okay, it took about five whacks of the hammer and that popped right out. So now I can turn this freely to get at the uh, caliper bolts. I'll take the caliper off next. Okay, I got the two 14 millimeter bolts out there <coughs> that are holding the uh, caliper on. One on top. One was down here, and then I have a wire through this uh, hole where the bolt was just to tie up the caliper. I don't let it hang by the hose. And this cartridge or the center piece here just had to pry out a little bit with a screwdriver. And that exposes exposes the pads. I can do this here. So you can see the pads are pretty good shape yet. The rotor is not in such good shape, but that's a different story. Okay, take the brake pads out. Both of those. Both of those out. If you're changing pads, all you do now is just put your new ones in, put it back together. You want to make sure that these these guys move freely. Otherwise, your caliper might hang up and burn up your pad and warp your rotor. These are pretty good. And I just have the bolts tucked back in here that held that piece on. So now I'll take off the main disc pad holder here. <laughs> okay, the main holder bracket is off. Those were 13 millimeter bolts. I just put those back in so I don't lose them. And now the rotor should just come off. Uh, maybe a little encouragement is needed. So anyway, I'm going to work that guy off next. Okay, the rotor's off. I had to spray WD-40 in the bolt holes and around the uh, axle and tap on it to work it in. And then it came off. A little disappointed. I'm sure I put uh, anti-seize compound all over that thing when I put in a new wheel bearing a few years ago, but it didn't come, did not come off easy. I guess next I'll take off the axle nut since that's going to have to be done sometime. Okay, that came off not too hard. 30 millimeter socket. I guess next I'll take the uh, strut, lower strut mount off. There's just two, two bolts that hold that on. Nuts on the other side. Okay, those two 18 millimeter nuts came off no problem. I had this part before. I had, did have to release this anti-lock brake uh, electrical connector here. Where is it? There it is. And so now I'm just going to pop this out so I can get this free. I think I'm going to fold this uh, hub down. I think I can leave the uh, ball joint pinch bolt connection. I can leave that alone. I think it'll fold out of the way. We'll find out. These are the strut mount bolts I took out. They're splined, which is nice when you take the nut off. You don't have to try to hold this other end. But if you don't wrap them pretty good when you're tapping them out, you end up having to drive it out with a punch or something. But if you get that last hit when the, when the bolt's just sticking through a little bit, where is it? There. If you give it a good wrap, the bolt flies out. You don't have to deal with the punch or anything. And so I got this guy free, just released that plastic expansion deal. And now I'm just going to get a screwdriver. And, well, maybe I don't even need the screwdriver. I can pull it out by hand. Just got to be careful not to pull the U-joint apart. So I got to keep pushing this axle in as I pull this out. Let's see if I can get that free now. Okay, so that very easily came down. I pushed the axle, pushed the axle out with no problem. The uh, axle washer fell out. I got to I'll keep that with the uh, axle nut so I don't forget. You're really supposed to replace these when you take them off, but this car is worth nothing, so I'm just going to use the old one again. This is an interesting uh, deposit of rusty colored stuff here that shows up. 
Not sure what that is. The wheel bearing sounds a little goofy even when I turn it slowly. I should probably put another one in, but I'm so sick of changing these. I've changed them like three times on this car already. I put the bolts back in the direction they came out. Because of the splines, you should probably put them back in the same direction. And now the next thing will be to pop the axle out, which I do with a tire iron back in here. You just give it a little pop, and then that should pull out of the transmission. That's uh, one reason why you want to make sure you have the transmission fluid drain, because I think it will leak out of there if you don't. Okay, pop that out with no problem. I couldn't get the tire iron in there. I had to use a screwdriver. And the one thing you have to do is uh, you can't just pry it out. You have to give it a shot. So I had the screwdriver tucked in there, and I hit the end of the screwdriver with a hammer to pop it out, and it came right out. Okay, I did the same thing on the passenger side. <clears throat> it all came apart about the same. The rotor came off. It just fell off. It was not uh, rusted on at all. <clears throat> the axle. The whole thing took about 40 minutes to take off both, uh, to get both axles all the way out. And I'm fortunate to have a lift to do this on, but I used to do it on just ramps or <clears throat> concrete blocks, so it's definitely possible. It might take a little longer, but none of it's really that hard.